Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and today we're going to be demonstrating and explaining the O-Birth effect and the extra efficiencies that you can gain from doing some of your burns at the highest possible velocity. In this example we're in a high orbit around Gilly, and in this fictitious mission we want to be able to get from Eve to Duna to our Duna space station. Problem is here we've got very little fuel remaining in our tank, just over around 900 meters per second. Uh, in delta V. And now we can spend that delta V in a few ways. So we're just going to do a small burn here to get out of our Gilly orbit onto our Eve orbit. With the magic of video editing we've done a few very small burns to put ourselves in a circularized orbit around Eve here and also altered our inclination just a little so we're more closely aligned with Duna and Kerbin orbits. So we're time warping now to the opposite side of Eve's orbit here so that when we accelerate we're going to exit in a prograde direction relative to the Sun. This is going to push our Sun apoapsis higher now we're starting here at a velocity of around 391 meters per second. So we'll see how much delta V we've got available. Of course if you're trying to lower your sun apoapsis you would make your burn on the opposite side of the orbit in a retrograde direction relative to the sun. So you saw there we didn't have a lot of fuel left as I said before and we're, uh, we're just going to time accelerate until we've burnt all of our fuel and we'll see how far we can get with the delta V we've got remaining. So we've ended up with a sun apoapsis of 15.9 billion kilometers and we're traveling now at 1309.5 meters per second. Our total delta V available to us there was around 918 meters per second. So the exit from Eve's orbit there certainly isn't perfect but uh, but it's close enough to demonstrate the big difference the O-birth effect can make. So we're going to do a quick load back at our circular orbit of Eve again. But this time we're going to take advantage of the O-Birth effect and we do this by bringing our periapsis as close to the surface of Eve as we can get without entering Eve's atmosphere of course. So we're bringing this right down to around 100 kilometers and it's going to require us to burn just over 300 meters per second in our delta V. Now this is the counterintuitive part I guess of uh, of the O-Birth effect because we've just lost a third of all of our fuel essentially degrading our current orbit of Eve. The thing is though is that the amount of delta V we can gain by falling deep into Eve's gravity well here more than makes up for the loss of fuel. So we'll time warp down just before we hit our periapsis and you can see here that our velocity is almost 4,500 meters per second as opposed to our original orbital speed in our last test which was around 390 meters per second. So we'll start burning prograde here until our fuel runs out again. And you can see how much faster the Sun apoapsis marker is growing compared to what it was before and with just the remaining 620 or so meters per second of delta V that we had left we've been able to raise that apoapsis to 23.8 billion kilometers. Now this could easily take us to Duna uh, with an aerobraker maneuver if we planned it just right or even you know it would give a spare delta V for more burns around Kerbin or for inclination changes or anything. Now that's a pretty amazing difference. So let's again quick load and see how much delta V we've actually saved here. We'll just burn at the same point as we did the first time. And again we have 15.9 billion kilometers when we've run out of fuel. So at this point we can actually bring up our debug toolbar in Kerbal Space Program which is a feature I would never recommend using when you're playing a real game. 
and switch on the infinite fuel so we can continue burning and see how big this difference is. So before turning on infinite fuel, we're travelling at 1309 metres per second. And we're going to burn until we get to the same 23.8 billion kilometres as we did with our O-Birth effect example. So again with the magic of video editing, we've just sped this right up so we don't have to sit through this burn again. So there you have it. To get to the same sun apoapsis, we've needed to burn until we hit a velocity of 2,126 metres per second. Now that's a difference of 817 metres per second. Now considering we needed to burn 300 metres per second in our delta V uh, in fuel to dive down into Eve's gravity well, we have still saved over 800 metres per second in delta V. Now the O-birth effect is confusing because it seems like we're getting energy from nowhere. And you know, it may seem that the rocket is getting energy for free, which, you know, would of course violate the conservation of energy laws, but this is not correct. When travelling at a low speed, an increase in velocity adds a small amount of kinetic energy. Yet if you're travelling at a high speed, the same amount of velocity increase will add many times more the energy. Kinetic energy essentially gives us more power against gravitational drag further in our orbits. The Newtonian formula to calculate kinetic energy is simple and elegant. It tells us that energy is equal to one half the mass of an object multiplied by the velocity squared of that object. So we'll take this as an example. We have got a one ton craft that's travelling at 100 metres per second and we're going to accelerate it to 200 metres a second. First we need to work out the energy at our starting velocity and then take that away from the energy at our end velocity. So plugging in our numbers for the starting velocity, we have one half times a thousand kilograms times 100 meters squared. And this gives us five million joules or five megajoules. And our end velocity will be 200 meters a second. So plug in these numbers and it gives us an energy of 20 megajoules. So with our addition of 100 meters per second, we've gained 15 megajoules in kinetic energy. So let's now take a more extreme example. Let's now add 100 meters per second, the same amount, while traveling at a much higher velocity. So when we were at our burn point at Eve's periapsis of around 100 kilometers from the surface, we were moving at around 4,400 meters per second. So for simplicity, let's round that down to 4,000 meters per second. So we'll plug in our numbers here, and we have a starting kinetic energy of around 8,000 megajoules, and our end velocity will this time be 4,100 meters per second, giving us a total of 8,400 megajoules. So our gain here was 405 megajoules, even though we spent the exact same fuel and we gained the exact same amount of delta V. So how much energy is this exactly? Let's break it down into something that's probably a little bit more common. Let's break it down into kilowatt hours. A typical family uses around 30 kilowatt hours per day. Now there's 3.6 megajoules in one kilowatt hour. So in our first example, a gain of 15 megajoules would give us an equivalent 4.17 kilowatt hours. Barely enough to run our example family home for a few hours. But in our second example, 405 megajoules gives us an equivalent 112 and a half kilowatt hours. Enough to power our example family home for almost four days. Again, that is a massive difference. It's this kinetic energy difference that gives us such a big change in our final sun apoapsis. Now obviously weights of our craft would change while burning fuel, and we haven't taken that into account at all, but just as rough numbers you can see how much more energy is gained while accelerating at high speeds. So I hope you enjoyed that episode, I really enjoyed making this one in particular, so if you do like it please do share and subscribe. The more subscribers I can get, the more videos like this I can make. So yeah, please do subscribe to see more, follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. So all of our rocket stages together here gives us a total delta V, based on our formula, for 10,443.6 meters per second. So let's give this a go. I've placed our rocket in an orbit and cancelled out all of its velocity, so it's basically completely still in Kerbin's reference frame. 